This episode has been brought to you by our super generous supporters on Patreon. We could bring the woolly mammoth back from extinction, hypothetically. But why would we want to do that? The ice age that they thrived in disappeared long ago, transformed by thousands of years of natural climate change. They would have nowhere to go. And to go through all that work just to put them in zoos seems kind of pointless. I mean, most kids just go to the zoo to see the, ooh, look at the penguins. Ooh, I can put my penny in this machine and roll it and then it, it flattens and becomes this weird design. But some researchers think that by cloning a woolly mammoth and reintroducing it to its former stomping grounds, they can help us stop catastrophic climate change. Good Stuff producer Matt Weber shows us how bringing back the past might help us save the future. Great Scott. 12,000 years ago, the world was a very different place. This was the Pleistocene. The planet was much colder, by as much as 10 degrees, much of the northern hemisphere lay buried under miles of continent-wide ice sheets, and humanity had just begun its slow occupation of the world. This was the world of the woolly mammoth, the end of their world, in fact. With the recession of the world's glaciers and the intrusion of human hunting parties, the woolly mammoth would soon be extinct. Although a small population hung on in the northern islands of Siberia well into the time of the pharaohs in Egypt, the world they inhabited was already long gone. But there is an ambitious geoengineering project in Siberia today with the intention of resurrecting the woolly mammoth. It is called Pleistocene Park, and like the fictional Jurassic Park, its aim is to bring back an extinct ecosystem. Much of Siberia today is made up of dense, remote forests, growing in soft, mossy ground. But back in the Pleistocene, it was grassland. Wide open grasslands were the dominant feature in the Earth's landscape back then. This is where the woolly mammoth thrived. In the intervening millennia, as the climate changed, these grasslands gave way to other ecosystems. In the lifetime of our planet, ecosystems and habitats have always been in a state of flux. Nothing is permanent. Far from the exception, extinction and gradual change are constant. And the high Arctic Siberia is changing again. Rising global temperatures are melting the permafrost present at these latitudes. Not only is this phenomenon turning large swaths of the area into so-called drunken forests, where trees begin to list as if drunk, unable to keep themselves anchored in the newly thawed soil, the warming of the permafrost threatens to exasperate global warming further by releasing stores of carbon and methane trapped for eons in the underlying soil. And methane is a much worse greenhouse gas than CO2. It traps about 10 times the heat energy, a mass release of methane from the once frozen Siberian permafrost could abruptly accelerate global warming. And this could lead to a hypothetical event called the clathrate gun. A large reserve of methane can be found frozen in the Arctic seabed. This is a methane clathrate, basically a form of methane that is trapped in crystalline ice at the bottom of the polar seas. An unchecked greenhouse effect could warm up the oceans enough to melt the ice and send the methane shooting into the atmosphere. If this ever happened, there'd be no way to stop it, like trying to put a fired bullet back into the chamber of a gun. Hence, clathrate gun. This has probably happened a couple times in the Earth's past. The largest extinction event in the history of the planet, the Permian-Triassic extinction, where 95% of all life on Earth perished, is thought to have been caused by a clathrate gun event. And there is evidence of this happening today. In the Yamal Peninsula in Siberia, sinkholes have been found that are most likely the result of large outgassings of methane in the melting permafrost. But it's not too late to stop a clathrate gun from firing altogether. And that is exactly what they're trying to do at Pleistocene Park. Located in the northern reaches of Siberia, Pleistocene Park has been slowly trying to reintroduce the grassland habitat of 12,000 years ago for 40 years now. Grassland provides a much better sink for extracting and storing greenhouse gases, and it has a much higher albedo, meaning it reflects more sunlight than a typical forest, and thus keeps the planet cooler. These grassland ecosystems may have played a crucial role in regulating the waves of glaciation that inundated our planet over the eons. As the grassland flourished, the planet cooled, and when the planet became too cold, the grassland withered, reducing the planet's albedo and releasing its store of carbon back into the atmosphere, allowing the planet to warm up again. But the best way to maintain a grassland ecosystem is to have a high-density population of large herbivores. Along with a variety of other species, the woolly mammoth played a critical part in cultivating the planet's vast grasslands during the Pleistocene. They had to eat tons of vegetation, and that kept rotting plant material from accumulating and releasing their carbon into the atmosphere. Like their modern-day cousins, giant herbivores Herds of these massive animals stomped down any growing trees and kept the forests at bay. For now, the researchers at Pleistocene Park use ATV vehicles and heavy machinery to crush young trees and reshape the landscape, just as the woolly mammoth had done. 
bringing them back could be an efficient way to restore these vanished grasslands. Woolly mammoth bones have been found all over Pleistocene Park, a testament to their once ubiquity in the area. And we've found woolly mammoth carcasses mummified in the ice all over Siberia. Some of them are so well preserved, we can extract intact strands of DNA. And hypothetically, we could use that DNA to clone them and bring them back from extinction. We've been cloning mammals for over 20 years, ever since we cloned Dolly the sheep in 1996. And since Dolly, we've cloned pigs, horses, and bulls. So there's no reason to think we couldn't clone an elephant or a woolly mammoth. But we've never cloned an animal as old as the woolly mammoth. But there are a few proposed methods. We could extract preserved DNA from a mammoth carcass and insert it into the egg cell of its closest living relative, the Asian elephant. This would be a little like growing a chimpanzee inside of a human mother but we've done this before. The Pyrenean ibex went extinct in 2000, but researchers were able to extract its DNA and insert it into the egg cell of a closely related goat. Three years after the entire species was declared extinct, the Pyrenean ibex was born again, but the baby only survived for a few minutes. So far, we have not found enough preserved woolly mammoth DNA to make this technique possible. So alternatively, if we could find some preserved sperm from a male mammoth, we could use it to inseminate an Asian elephant. The resulting baby would be a hybrid, but after several generations of this technique, an almost pure woolly mammoth could be created. But frozen sperm is only viable for about 15 years. We'd have to figure out a way to use sperm that is thousands of years old. Another method would be to modify the genome of living Asian elephants, giving them woolly mammoth characteristics, like resistance to the cold, longer hair, and extra fat. This method is already being tested by Harvard scientist George Church, and he's successfully inserted mammoth genes into the Asian elephant's genome, although they haven't gone the extra step and created a viable embryo. These animals would not be woolly mammoths. They'd be something entirely new. Woolly mammoths have been extinct for a long time. How they behaved in the prehistoric past has been extensively studied, but can't be known for certain. And how they would behave today is not guaranteed. Raised by surrogate parents and scientists, these newly resurrected mammoths would have to adapt to a world radically transformed from the one they evolved in. While Pleistocene Park's vision is grand and ambitious, we might be too naive to face the immense complexities of our planet's ecology. Because drastically altering the Earth's landscape to stop global warming is a little like sticking your finger in the barrel of a gun to prevent yourself from being shot. It would be easier and much more likely to succeed if we would just take our finger off the trigger and put the gun down. But if we continue to do so little to stop the increase of greenhouse gases in our atmosphere, we may be left with few alternatives. One thing is certain, we are changing the Earth's environment in fundamental and unpredictable ways. The largest global science experiment in human history is well underway. Like the woolly mammoth, we are Pleistocene creatures. We came to be who we are in the same grasslands as they did. And like the woolly mammoth, our past behavior is not necessarily how we have to behave in the future. Whether we are able to correct our mistakes or adapt to a world radically transformed from the one that we evolved in will be the choice we will have to face in the coming decades with or without woolly mammoths. So what do you think? Should we bring back the woolly mammoth? We're already changing the earth. Should we change it further? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share this video as far and wide as a brisk place to seen grassland. Special thanks to our Patreon subscribers for making this episode of The Good Stuff possible. Without Patreon, there would be no good stuff. So if you'd like us to keep returning like a hypothetical woolly mammoth clone, consider going to our Patreon page and supporting the show. Thanks for watching.